newscaster in every newspaper across the nation has made headlines out of it, and this afternoon we are honored indeed to have here in our studio this man, Kenneth Arnold, who we believe may be able to give us a first-hand account and give you the same on what happened. Kenneth, first of all, if you'll move up here to the microphone just a little closer, uh, we'll ask you uh, to just tell in your own fashion, as you told us last night in your hotel room and again this morning, uh, what you were doing there and how this entire thing started. Go ahead, Kenneth. Well, at about... Uh... 2.15, I took off from Chehalis, Washington, en route to Yakima, and of course, every time that any of us fly over the country near Mount Rainier, we spend an hour or two in search of the marine plane that's never been found that they believe is in the snow someplace southwest of that particular area. That area is located at about, or <coughs> its elevation is about 10,000 foot, and I had made one sweep in close to Mount Rainier and down one of the canyons and was dragging it for any types of object that might prove to be the marine ship, uh... And as I come out uh, of the canyon there, it was about 15 minutes. I was approximately 25 to 28 miles from Mount Rainier. I climbed back up to 9,200 feet, and I noticed to the left of me a chain which looked to me like the tail of a Chinese kite, uh, kind of weaving and going at a terrific speed across the face of Mount Rainier. I uh, at first uh, thought they were geese because it flew like geese, but it was going so fast that that uh, I immediately changed my mind and decided it was a bunch of new jet planes in formation. Well, as the, as the planes come to the edge of Mount Rainier, flying at about 160 degrees south, uh, I uh, thought I would clock them because it was such a clear day, and uh, I didn't know where their destination was, but uh, due to the fact that I had Mount St. Helens and Mount Adams to clock them by, I just thought I'd see just how fast they were going, since among pilots we argue about speed so much. And... Uh, uh, they seemed to flip and flash in the sun just like a mirror. And, uh, in fact, I happened to be at an angle from the sun that seemed to hit the tops of these uh, peculiar-looking things in such a way that it, it almost blinded you when you when you looked at, at them through your plexiglass windshield. Well, uh, I uh, it was about one minute to three when uh, I, st I <coughs> started clocking them on my, uh, my sweet second-hand clock. And uh, as I kept looking at them, I kept looking for their tails. They didn't have any tails. <laughs> I thought, well, maybe I, something's wrong with my eyes. And I turned the, the plane around and opens the window and looks out the window, and sure enough, I couldn't find any tails on them. And uh, the whole uh, observation of these particular ships didn't last more than about two and a half minutes. And I could see them only plainly when uh, they seemed to tip their wing or whatever it was, and the sun flashed on them. They looked something like uh, a pie plate that was cut in half with a sort of a convex triangle in the rear. Now, I thought, well, uh, that maybe they're jet planes with just the, pa the tail painted green or brown or something, and didn't think too, too much of it, but kept on watching them. Uh, they didn't fly in a conventional formation that's taught in our army. They, uh, they seemed to kind of weave in and out right above the mountaintops. And uh, I would say that they even went down into the canyons in several instances Oh, probably a hundred feet. But I could see them against uh, the snow, of course, on Mount Rainier, and against the snow on Mount Adams as they were flashing, and uh, against a high ridge that happened to lay in between Mount Rainier and Mount Adams. But uh, when I observed the tail end of the last one passing Mount Adams, and I was at an angle uh, near Mount Rainier from it, but uh, I looked at my watch, and it showed one minute and 42 seconds. Well, uh, I still thought, well, that's pretty fast, and I didn't stop to think what the distance was between the two mountains. Well, I landed at Yakima, Washington, and uh, Al Baxter was there to greet me, and he saw up here. And uh, <laughs> he told me, I guess I better change my brand. <laughs> uh, but he, he kind of gave me a mysterious sort of a look that maybe I had seen something. He didn't know. And, well, I just kind of forgot it then until I got down at Pendleton, and I... I began looking at my map and taking measurements on it. And the best calculation I could figure out, now even in spite of error, would be around 1,200 miles an hour because making the distance from Mount Rainier to Mount Adams in, we'll say, approximately two minutes, it's almost, uh, well, it would be around 25 miles per minute. Now, a line for error, we can give them three minutes or four minutes to make it, and uh, they're still going more than, than 800 miles an hour, and to my knowledge, there isn't anything that I read about outside of some of the German rockets that would go that fast. These were flying in more or less a level, uh, constant altitude. They weren't going up and they weren't going down. They were just simply flying straight and level, and I, uh, 
and I laughed and I told the pilots at the tunnel, I said, they sure must have had a tailwind, <laughs> but it didn't seem to help me much. But to the best of my knowledge and the best of my description, uh, that is what I actually saw, and uh, like I told the Associated Press, I'll, uh, I'd be glad to <laughs> confirm it with my hands on a Bible, because I did see it, and whether it has anything to do with our army or our intelligence or whether it has to do with some foreign country, I don't know. But I did see it, and I did clock it, and I just happened to be in a beautiful position to do it, and uh, it's just as much a mystery to me as it is to everyone else who's been calling me the last 24 hours wondering what it was. An ordinary man in an ordinary street in America. But this man started the 1947 wave of sightings that swept the world when he claimed to have seen from his mountain rescue plane nine disc-like objects, roughly 45 miles away, flying at a speed of approximately 1,500 miles per hour near Mount Rainier, Oregon. The date? June 24, 1947. Later, when asked by a reporter to describe how they flew, Arnold said their motion was like saucers skipping over water. In the papers the next day, the world first saw the term flying saucer. On June 24, 1977, 30 years to the day after he first sighted them, Ken Arnold consented to speak to us. He had refused to make any public statements for the last five years. It's easy to see that after 30 years, he's still angry at the disbelief. All right here, we've seen something, I've seen something, hundreds of pilots have seen something in the skies. We have dutifully reported these things. And we have to have 15 million witnesses before anybody's going to look into the problem seriously? Why, this is utterly fantastic. This is more fantastic than, than flying saucers or, or people from Venus or anything, as far as I'm concerned. The greatest surprise was when Arnold reported his sighting to the nearest U.S. military air base. He found on the wall of the commander's office this classified gun sight photograph which bore a remarkable resemblance to what Arnold claimed he had just seen and Shaver had discussed three years before. 